Yo, what is good everybody? Welcome back to another Call of Duty Mobile video. Today we're going to be starting our brand new series called Meet the Pros. So essentially, if you guys don't know, I am co-casting the Omen Challenger series with Bobby Plays, which is actually going to be happening later on today. So make sure to watch it on Bobby Plays on Trovo. But anyway, today we're going to be taking a look at specific pro players. Actually, in the series, we're going to be looking at specific pro players in the pro scene and actually analyzing more or less their game style. So today we're going to start off with a good friend of the channel, Vague, a fellow Canadian. As you guys can see in the background, we do have a picture of him. And we're going to take a look at his loadouts as well as his SND gameplay during that tournament. Yes, we're going to be showing you guys a SND gameplay instead of a hard point just because I just feel like SND is one of those game modes that are really fun to play if you're with a team. I personally hate playing it, but it's one of those games that can show basically how well you are. If there is a specific player that you guys would like to see, let me know in the comments down below. I already have a few that I kind of already had in mind that I'm going to record already. Like for example, I have Wally as well as Tectonic. So if there's somebody specific you guys want me to see, maybe like Lil B, maybe Zia, maybe Parka, you know, those guys. But let me know in the comments down below if you guys want to see someone specific. Yes, the style of this is basically I have a clip. I might actually stop doing SND footages footage and might do specifically for like hard point or domination just because I feel like in respawn map, it shows more how you should play because three out of the four game modes are respawn in rank. So personally, we'll just try it out for now. But as you guys can see, Vague. Fellow Canadian, mostly SMG player, one of the, if not the best movement player in the game. You guys can argue out with me, but we'll check a look at, take a look at the loadouts that he's rocking. So first of all, we're going to take a look at his RUS loadout. Keep in mind, do not pay attention to a secondary loadout because secondary, what he has is basically not useful. You're going to switch it most likely to an RPG. Pro players are not allowed to use RPGs. So as you guys will see, RUS rocking that quick draw for grip, which I usually recommend for every gun and then the long barrel. Long barrel is really nice, makes it closer to an AR when it comes to range. But I can understand if you want to use like an extended mag or a laser sight, but those are the ones you want to see. He does use toughness and he does use lightweight and dead silence and the annihilator. So keep in mind, there's a few rules in competitive. There is generally no shock RC. So you don't even have to worry about using cold blooded. But if you are in pubs, cold blooded, definitely a must. Annihilator, one of the best. And also another thing to keep in mind, in pro scenes, you can, generally speaking, in this Omen series, you can only have one of each operator. You can't have two Annihilators, you can't have four Annihilators, you can't have three Gravity Spikes. So he's the one rocking the Annihilator. And not only that, you can't have shotguns, you can only have one Snipers. But that's not really as important because you guys can actually rock Snipers. And in rank, you probably have four Sniper players, three Annihilators, whatever. His core is actually very similar when it comes to the build. So most of his SMGs are going to have Quick Draw, Four Grip, and also the Long Bearer. I think Long Bearer is very, very nice. And again, similar, he's going to have toughness. Toughness is really good on the cordite because when you get shot, your flinch is phenomenally high because it's a great recoil. So definitely something to keep in mind. And uh, trophy system and nades. I forgot to mention that I use sticky, but I think nades are really good as well as trophy systems are basically a must in pro scenes because basically everybody is just nading you as you leave your spawn. So that's basically the loadout. So we're actually going to take some gameplay footage right now and um, we'll be back. Quick info, it is SND right now that we're doing. It is going to be Tribe against Prodigy. Tribe is currently, in my opinion, the best competitive team in NA. And then we have Prodigy with some of the better players currently in the game as well as some, some of the biggest content creators that are currently pros. So we have Vague on one team, we have Zia and Parker, you guys may have known them. And then on the other side, we obviously have Lil B, Bolu, Tectonic, Marshy, Nero, just a bunch of them. Also, we do have Support, which is Orange, and we also have Adapt. So those are our players. If you guys do know the pro scenes, we'll start. Looks like a pretty heavy A push, but we do see smoke in that area. So we'll see if they'll be able to push in or not. No kills, actually I lied. As I say that, Lil B with the kill on Orange. You have Vay coming on the side, maybe able to get a kill, does not get a kill. So I want to talk about that clip just a little bit. So as you may notice, this is going to be on raid. And whenever you're pushing in competitive, people are going to be doing three styles of pushing. There's either going to be pushing towards uh, A, pushing towards B, or kind of more or less playing the sides like mid. And then after deciding, after you get a pick where they go, I do sometimes see people go from A and then fake and go around back to the B plan. Here you can clearly see it's a heavy A push. This is, as you can see, they smoke the window slash the bank vault area. So that's what they call it in pro scenes. 
that's a huge thing to do. If you're playing SND and you kind of want to play in a rush style, you have to smoke that area because there's two snipers, generally speaking, someone in the bank vault or someone in the window. So you can, generally speaking, smoke in there and then push in as he did to be able to get a few kills. Just like this part here, I'm just going to show it back just a few seconds. He is pushing right through the smoke and then bang right into the window area, slides in, yeah. try to get pre-fire. Didn't get any kill there, unfortunately, but generally speaking, in pubs, if you're playing SND on that area, you can get a couple picks. And it's, especially if you're aggressive, you can get one kill and then run back into the bank vault, get a second kill. So that part was really, really huge. I want to show you guys another clip showing his movement. You don't run in a straight line, you try to zigzag. In this game, you're basically holding your joystick towards like a diagonal angle, and then you're moving it to the other angle while at the same time moving your, your camera at the same time. So you're going like this. It's kind of hard to do, and it actually looks kind of wonky when you're playing. As you can see right here, you'll see he's... Recently, he's running, he's going, he's sliding. One of those newer teams bah, bah, working bah, to play bah, together. Bah, 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 right? So that way it prevents people from sniping him. And that's also a good way to rush snipers. I've actually played, like I said, played him one-on-one -on -one shotguns. He uses that on me all the time and he just destroyed me. So that's a huge thing to note about movement. That is one of the better movements that you can use. Cute tac tactics when it comes to those. All right, in this next clip we're going to show you. Basically, we're going to show you how he uses his movement for an offensive approach rather than a defensive approach. So you'll see here he actually uses his zigzag technique just a little bit. Then he gets into that crouch and slide slash jump technique right onto a drop shot. So he utilizes all movement techniques that you can use just to get a kill. So you'll see definitely, definitely, definitely that's very important is the fact that you crouch and slide or slide and jump is what I meant to say. And then after the drop shot, watch real quick. Yeah, Vague looking pretty good in these last couple of rounds for sure. Hit some more shots right there. Takes out Tectonic and evens it up at 3-3. And as you guys saw, he zigzagged, slide, jump, shot, prone, and then got a kill. Definitely use of all any type of movement that you can use that basically confuses your opponent. Got a kill from that. So that's one of the advantage of using those kind of style. So huge, huge, huge plates there. So let's try to find another clip that I can use. All right, in this next clip, we're gonna show you guys how Vague decides whether or not he should take a fight or actually back down. You'll see in this clip that he actually sees Marshy first, takes a few shots, and then you can see for a half second decides whether or not he wants to go. But he realizes that he's at advantage because he knows where he's heading. The opponent's also lower health than he, so he decides to push up. You'll see real quick. Time that Little B doesn't go for the wall bang on mid. He has two players pushing through that mid side. Oh my God. Oh, and Little B doesn't hit any of his shots on Zia, so even though he's 1 HP, he gets taken out right there. That's insane. Wow. That's a close game. And Prodigy up. 5-2. Wow. Oh All right, as you guys saw in the other clip, very, very important that he decided that he wanted to attack. He did about 35 damage. So since pro players generally have about the same skill level, he knew that the advantage he had was the extra 35 health, which is basically two shots from any guns before he can actually get killed. So he's like, all right, I'm gonna push up. I'm gonna try to figure out where he went. He heard the sliding, he went left, he hit him first. He had a slightly faster re reaction time, managed to kill Marchi, didn't take much damage. Actually was super lucky, managed to get another kill. I say super lucky, but let's be honest, you guys may not hear it in here, but in the pro scenes, communication is super key. His whole team was probably communicating, saying, oh, there's somebody in kitchen, which is the area where Nero came out. He actually managed to kill Nero in that. He said, kitchen, 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 one hit, one hit, one hit. And then he saw him, got that one kill, managed to get another one. And he does have over 12 kill in this next clip. This next clip is very important because this next clip show how you have to be versatile and you have to be able to pick up other people's gun as your secondary because you'll see, I'll explain it afterwards, but you'll see. Slowed their momentum significantly, fortunately enough. Adapt able to pick up the frag on little B. Hit marker out of orange. Try to guard the bomb from laundry side. Oh, he hit marker. Wow. Time's almost up. They hit marker, marker. Ooh, that orange gives the player around the corner. Oh, hit marker's Marshy again, but he's not able to get the kill. So as you guys saw, he picked up the sniper because his teammate died. In competitive, you can only have one sniper per team. So whenever the snipers die, it's meant for someone to pick it up so that they can use it. However, he didn't get a kill with the sniper, but he did hit marker someone, which made Marshy have to play defensive so that he can push up. So then his other teammate can hit him to make him one shot. So it made it 
Really, really important that he actually pick up the sniper. Had he not picked up the sniper, it could have been completely different because Marshy could have been able to defend that area there, didn't have to run back towards the van, and then his teammate wouldn't have shot him, and then he might have been able to take out Vague in that situation. So that's why it's very important to be kind of versatile, pick up the gun that you see on the ground to have like a secondary when it comes to the sniper. Don't just, oh, I have an SMG, I'm just going to stick with this SMG. Oh, I found an AR, maybe pick up the AR. Oh, I see a shotgun, maybe pick up the shotgun. So be a little more open-minded and actually pick up guns off the ground. All right, and this next clip, we're going to see basically how he flanked all the way around. He is on defense right now. His team is down two right now. On offense, flanking is very efficient because there's always people defending in the back. So you can kind of shoot people. But on defense, it's not typically something you see, but there is always that flanker position that you can get to catch people off guard. And in this situation, you see he flipped all the way around, got all the way to their laundry. So basically, it's their spawn, their little top sniper area and he's gonna go all the way around be able to get a kill you'll see this in this clip real quick two prodigy players remaining as zia tries to push through middle see if he can retake a little bit of map control pretty easy a plant for tribe right here so they've got three players on site they picked up that sniper trying to get maybe one more pick Ooh. trying to flex on him a little bit Oh, one v three for vague now. All players for tribe are up top. All right, as you guys saw, as soon as he kills little B, he also decided to go hide right away. You never want to be in the open after you get a gunfight. You kind of want to regenerate your health. And as I mentioned, he picked up the sniper. It did not help him in that fight. But however, if he would have gone like one or two picks with that, it would have changed the game completely. He was able to get one snipe. Like if right there, if they didn't push so hard, he would probably got one snipe kill probably been able to kill the next two but the fact is he would have had the chance to do it with a sniper and if you are a sniper you always want to pick up an smg or ar when you're a secondary round but i think that's the only clips left that i have to show you guys so let me check out one second all right that's gonna be it for today so the game actually ended 10-7 in favor for tribe they actually popped off at the end very close game um vague did manage to get 14 top fragging for his team i might actually do another video in the future of him playing hardpoint but i do have a few other players that i have for hardpoint i think we actually looked at um tectonic as well as wally so if you guys want to check out if you want me to do a specific player let me know in the comments down below but you guys will see hopefully that helped you guys to how pro players play it is completely different from people in rank you actually don't even notice even the background noise that goes into a pro game like they constantly communicate it is pure madness honestly it is insane but hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did don't forget to like share and subscribe leave me in the comments down below again who you guys want to see next and if you haven't yet make sure to check my latest video it's gonna pop out at the end of the video all right i'm out see you guys next time kill it